Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Power Up Your LNP and AAV Sample Prep with Unagi. I'm Christy Jewell of Labroots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by Labroots and brought to you by Unchained Labs. To learn more about our sponsor, please visit unchainedlabs.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We will answer as many of your questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. I would now like to welcome our speaker, Dr. Del Ray Jackson, Marketing Manager, Buffer Exchange and Workflows. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the Biography tab at the top of your screen. Welcome, Del Rey. You may now begin your presentation. Thanks for that great start, Christy. Really appreciate that. Yes, I'm here to talk to you about how you can power up your LNP and AAV sample prep with Unagi. So as a kid growing up reading comic books, and to be quite honest, as an adult who still reads comic books, I was super excited to see this storyline brought to life in the movies. It's okay if you don't recognize this character, but he's one of my favorite. And what you know really drew me to him as a kid is that he goes on this quest to collect these different stones to gain ultimate power. And what I thought was so cool is that each of those gems that you see there in his gauntlet gave him a different power. Like one gave him power, power over time, another over space, and another over reality. And he, while he does do some pretty amazing stuff, unfortunately, as probably most of you know, he is a villain, so he is ultimately brought down by uh, the heroes. But speaking of amazing stuff, many of you are already doing that every day uh, as you do buffer exchange for these essential biomolecules for gene therapy. So whether you're working with lipid nanoparticles, the quest that you have to go on is to gently and quickly remove the organic solvent after production to keep LMPs from growing in size. If you're working with viral vectors, then what you need to conquer is concentrating what is often a very dilute uh, AAV or viral um, production, and at the same time, also needing to buffer exchange them. And if you're using everybody's tried and true favorite, nucleic acids, the trick with them is to get them desalted, so buffer exchange them before you can do downstream analysis and you wanna do that while minimizing loss. And I would say that goes for probably all of these biomolecules. And like the heroes who start out in their stories, maybe not having all the tools at their disposal using less than perfect um, means to achieve what they can do, you might be doing the same with manual methods for buffer exchange and concentration. So dialysis, uh, which can be very slow and run the risk of sample dilution, uh, might be something that you're you're stuck to, or perhaps you're using spin columns and centrifuging them down and having to be tied to the centrifuge so that you can process you know your your samples. Uh, it can be quicker, but then it can have that really annoying drawback of reducing your sample recovery due to the membrane clogging with sample buildup at the interface. And if you use TFF, it can often be complicated to set up, and really it's not justified unless you have a large sample volume. So what's the alternative for this? What can help you uh, power up and uh, conquer? Uh, that would be our Unagi, which lets you do up to eight buffer exchanges and or sample concentrations in parallel. That's up to eight different samples. You have a nice working volume range from a half a mil all the way up to 48 mils of sample. And you're gonna feel like the flash in that you can set all of this up really in just a few minutes, definitely less than 15 minutes of hands-on time for all of your runs. So how does this work? Well, let's get started with the consumable. It all starts here with our UNA. This is where your samples go in and you see a single one on the left there. That is the vessel that has that eight mil volume range and the working volume range is down to half a mil. You can see how we can process up to eight of those as they go in that sample rack pictured on the right. And something I really like about the sample rack, and I hear the same from customers, is that they can take that to their bench. They can take time to prep the UNAs, which you just pre-wet them with DI water or a buffer. Uh, let them sit for a few minutes, and then you can pipette your sample right into them. You can lock them right into place in the sample tray and then take it over to Inagi at your leisure. 
The membrane options that you have with Unagi are 10, 30, and 100 kilodalton. And good news, they are made out of regenerated cellulose. Why is that good news? That's because it doesn't have specific affinity or strong binding for many of these biomolecules that you see. Okay, so now you have your samples in your UNA. What happens next? Well, this is where the real power of Unagi comes in. Uh, we refer to the technology, the buffer exchange technology on Unagi as an automated pressure-based UFDF, UF standing for ultrafiltration, which just refers to the size of the biomolecules that we're filtering out. Diafiltration is when you add new buffer back in uh, as you filter from it. And I really like this cartoon comic because it shows at a glance some of the cool powers of this technology. So after inputting your samples, the first thing that Unagi does is it measures each sample's volume. Uh, it uses an ultrasonic tool, which we'll see in a moment exactly. And then it continues to track that volume by taking more volume measurements in every cycle here. So in the middle of the screen, the screen arrow refers to the cycles, the buffer exchange or concentration cycles that are required. And we apply an even positive pressure. And we do this at 15, 30, and 60 PSI. And what I mean by even is that all of your samples are in the same buffer exchange chamber, which we'll also see in a moment. Um, buffer exchange chamber close, uh, pressurizes up to the set pressure level, and then allows that filtrate to flow out. Now, the cool part is that you don't have to come back and figure out, you know, which samples maybe flowed faster or slower or exactly how much new buffer to add back. Unagi does all of that because it will remeasure the volume at the end of each buffer exchange cycle. And the adaptive part, uh, the, the cool part, is that it will change the amount of time that we apply that pressure to make sure that none of your samples will dry out. Goes through a few rounds of buffer exchange. Uh, once you have your exchange sample, exchange samples at the end, then we have that option to concentrate. Now you might be saying, well, Dell, I work with AVs or even LMPs. You know, I'm making 20, 50 mils of these things at a time. Well, that's great. We have you covered with our reduced sample volume application. So the UNA does have an eight mil working volume limit, but by taking advantage of conical tubes on your deck, you can actually concentrate from a starting volume of 48 mils all the way down to uh, half a mil. And we'll see some data of this in action with AAVs towards the end of the talk. The other cool part of Unagi, a second gem, if you will, is the gentle orbital mixing. Uh, this is optional, so it's something you can turn on and off. You have the power, so to speak, to do that. But mostly we see that for many, many of the biomolecules, uh, as mentioned in the gene therapy space, uh, tolerate this gentle orbital mixing quite well. And why do you want to use that? What, what's the benefit? Well, as mentioned before, if you're using a spin filter, something that you notice is that you can lose sample to that membrane interface due to something called dead end ultrafiltration. So as you apply a force, in this case, centrifugal force uh, across your, your sample, it will push not just the things you want to get out, but also the things you want to keep on that membrane interface. And there you can have things like nucleic acids, um, your proteins will, will clump up and aggregate, can you know, slow down your buffer exchange. Unagi doesn't have that. With this gentle orbital mixing that can occur during the entire buffer exchange cycle, uh, we keep your molecules of interest in solution as, we, as the positive pressure pushes out the filtrate. So it gives you two things, faster results, but also better recovery. We're talking about powering up how you want to do it. So Unagi enables that for you. Some of the things that you can control is the percent removal per cycle. Why does that matter? Well, there might be concentration dependencies to your molecules, meaning that if you reach some sort of critical concentration, perhaps things will fall out of solution, uh, or maybe you just don't want to do that. So you can take just a little bit out, a little bit of the filtrate out per cycle, or if you know that things flow well, uh, you can take a bunch out. You have complete control over that. Of course, that percent exchange value. Maybe you need a 99.9% .9 exchange. Maybe you just need a 94% exchange. That's something that you actually tell Unagi what you want. And using the volume sensor, it will reach that exact value for your samples. Same with the final concentration values. But if you're thinking, well, Dell, I don't, I don't know how to program all this stuff. No worries. We have you covered. We have a nice menu option, as you can see here. It's based upon the molecule and the experiment that you want to run. So between AAVs, nucleic acids, LMPs, 
and also works great for proteins. We're not going to see much data on that today. Um, but even the sample dependency of your biomolecules, we have, I would say, like a starter set for you. Um, but you can also easily optimize it for you. And really, it just changes things like pressure and target removal mostly. And if you're familiar with Unchained Labs products like our Stunner, Lunatic, or Uncle, then you already know that, as many people say, uh, we live up to the claim that our software is easy to use. So as you can hopefully see from these screenshots here, you don't have to become a, a super programmer or anything like that to use Unagi. Really, it's a menu-based system. You say which experiment you want to run. If you just want to do a concentrate only, you select your molecule type. And then uh, from there, it's just a few more selections, and you're on your way to running your buffer exchange and concentration experiments. Something else that's really cool is that you'll know exactly where Unagi is in the process. And it does this in two ways. Uh, through the software, it'll give you an overall experiment, I would say, like status. So you know like which buffer exchange cycle you're in, how long it's been running, what's the expected completion time. But also, you get a sample by sample breakdown. Really cool here. And if you can notice on your screen that orange button in the upper right to the left of the red one is pause experiment, there's some extra powers behind that. The power to actually pause the experiment and take out samples that may have already completed. You know, maybe you have different formulations or uh, slightly different concentrations for whatever reason. Some of your samples may finish before the others. You can pause, take those out and then resume the run. Usually that'll give you uh, even a faster run towards the end. And the other cool thing is that, um, like, <laughs> I, I guess some superheroes, Unagi has tele telepathy, where it can actually send you a message to your mobile device, at least, about where in the run it's at, if it's started, if it's in, and in cases where maybe it needs, like, new tips, it will also alert you for that as well. It is 2022, so even something like buffer exchange, there's no reason why you can't have accurate logs and reports for it. So if you really want to look like a superhero to that downstream analytical uh, or pre-development pre team that you might be prepping samples for, man, you're going to knock their socks off when you give them a sample by sample report showing like initial concentration volumes and then final concentrations and exchange rates as, as measured by Unagi. Hey, I keep saying Unagi, you saw this picture of a white box, but what, what's inside? Well, let's peel off the mask, so to speak, and take a look at the alter ego, who, who's under the Unagi shell. And this is what you see inside. So working from left to right, we start with our buffer rack. And just like that Una sample rack, where you can take it to your bench and kind of work with your samples there, the buffer rack has the same functionality. So maybe you have a bunch of different buffers, you got to prepare, you know, the several conical tubes with buffer or sample if you're running that reduced sample volume application. Uh, the buffer rack is something you can pick up easily with the handles and take to your bench. Or if you just need to drop a few conical tubes in there, uh, you can leave it there and bring them over to the instrument. The buffer exchange chamber where all of this magic happens is uh, located there in the front. And there you can see that Una sample rack locks into place. And then under that beautiful Unchained Labs logo in the upper right, that's the arm of the Unagi. There's two different tools on there. Number four is the pipette channel. This allows transfers of up to one mil of buffer. And in the case of reduced sample volume application, sample. Uh, because remember, we'll take sample from a conical tube and add it to the Una. That ultrasonic volume sensor, we should almost start with that one, right? It's so cool. Uh, number five, you don't see it now, it's a little shy, but we'll see a video of it in a moment. I promise you it's there. And then the disposable tip racks um, does, doesn't usually take a bunch of tips. And the other nice thing is Unagi actually tracks tips between runs. And so you can really just let it go you know, until you run out of tips. Uh, you don't have to refill it uh, in between runs at all. And something that's hiding in the shadows, a little bit camouflaged off to the right, uh, the unsung heroes, the caps. These are used in case you want to run less than eight samples at a time. You could technically run just one sample in Unagi if you'd like to. Uh, all you need to do is put the caps in any of the open positions, and they snap quite easily into place. All right, let's see it in action. Enough of me talking. So here is that volume measurement. Again, that occurs at the beginning of the run and then in every single buffer exchange cycle. It uses an ultrasonic uh, sensor technology, so really just uh, sending acoustic waves. You can't hear them, so don't worry. 
Um, and it will measure not just the sample, but you also see it make sure that each una is positioned exactly where it should be so that we can get, oh, sorry about that, so that we can get these on the nose measurements. So you can see across our working volume range, we have very good repeatability, very accurate measurements when compared to gravimetric. And the thing that frees you up so you can go off and do other work while buffer exchange is happening, obviously, is the buffer additions. And so that is done automatically by Unagi uh, using air displaced uh, pipetting technology. And how well does that work? Well, let's see the results. Uh, bang on dispense. So we have CVs less than 1%. And this graph on the right is one of my favorite ones to show. I really get excited for automated liquid handling. Uh, you can see over a, a range going from water up to 60 percent glycerol, a wide range of viscosities, that we have very accurate um, pipetting across the volume ranges for Unagi. Um, those, all of these data points are actually laying on top of each other. That's how accurate and repeatable they are. And then finally, we can't forget that we have the mixing that occurs in the buffer exchange chamber. It's a little shy, so it happens behind closed doors. You can actually have between 700, uh, actually all the way up to 1,000 RPM if you want. Our recommendation is typically 700 for most sample types. So you put all these gems, all these powers together, and what do you get? You get very nice recovery. So this is with the example of protein. We'll look at some uh, LMP, AAB, and nucleic acid specific data in a moment. But you can see that across whether you're running buffer exchange, buffer exchange with concentrate, or that reduced sample volume application, we have very nice recoveries. It's not just for protein. Obviously, that's probably why you tuned in, was to see how it would work with these other biomolecules. So here's a quick offering for you. But now what I'd like to do is take a moment and pretend like we're going through a workflow. Like maybe it's your group alone or you're working in conjunction with other groups and you're developing a uh, drug or doing drug discovery. And usually this, the first step is examining, you know, that nucleic acid payload that you might be uh, having to make. And so again, one of the reasons for doing this is so that you can desalt it so that you can uh, QC it downstream. And in this example, we're working with double-stranded DNA starting in TE, and we want to exchange it into nuclease-free water and taking advantage of Unagi, of being able to concentrate in conjunction. Uh, we want to shoot for a three-fold concentration using our 30 kilodalton una. And the results speak for themselves. So greater than 96% exchange was achieved. We were able to concentrate that three-fold factor in one, uh, and we had high recovery with this. But if maybe your arch nemesis are, is LMPs, at least getting them um, out of that uh, ethanol, that organic phase very quickly after manufacturing, uh, Unagi is the right tool for you. It's in your corner for sure. So you can automate your LMP prep in one step. Here's an example of using SM102 LMPs uh, starting in 12% ethanol. Uh, we wanted to concentrate them fourfold, and we're able to take advantage of our 100 kilodalton una to do that. Here, we had results very fast in less than two hours, but more importantly, we didn't do it at the loss of sample integrity. So looking at both size and the distribution measured by PDI, you can see that there was low to no change uh, in that, uh, which was great. And also on top of it, we had minimal uh, percent encapsulation loss uh, while doing buffer exchange and concentration all in one run. So LMPs come up a lot. Uh, they're used in, in our buffer exchange technology, and so we've you know looked at it very carefully. Uh, one of the things that we did was comparing dialysis to centrifuge. And why dialysis? Well, that's a kind of a go-to, a standard technique many people who make LMPs uh, utilize. And, but the drawback is, is that it does take take extra time. But you can see why they defer to it because compared to something like a spin filter, dialysis is much gentler in terms of not causing size changes um, or distribution. So compared to Inagi, you can see you get that same level of care and comfort um, from uh, dialysis with Unagi. So here is the comparison of both dialysis pre and post buffer exchange uh, with Unagi's results. Uh, really, the difference is, is how long it takes. So if you want to have results in the same day, then Unagi is the tool for you. Hey, perhaps uh, nanoparticles aren't your jam. That's not your vector of choice. Maybe you work with AAVs. And so in that case, perhaps you're making very dilute samples, uh, getting them ready, and you need to concentrate them down. So here's an example of how you can use Unagi to do that with first the reduced sample volume experiment and then concentrate only. We wanted to take AAV9 from 12 mils down to one mil, and we were able to do that. So we got that 12-fold concentration in only 90 minutes, 
while keeping the capsid payload intact. So obviously, you know, we're showing you results for like one serotype, uh, but there's many different serotypes that can behave differently with AAVs. And so in also looking at the effects of um, pH on that, um, we uh, were looking in the literature and saw some research on that. So we wanted to in-house using Unagi sort of recreate those results. And so in this case, we're looking at AAV5 and AAV9 uh, using our 30 kilodalton molecular weight cutoff, UNA. And we wanted to do a buffer exchange and a concentration. And here we were able to take advantage of the power of Unagi of being able to only take 33% of the volume out per cycle. And so interestingly, which agreed with the literature at uh, higher um, acid acidic levels or lower pH, so pH 4, both AAV9 and AAV5 tended to aggregate, so we didn't have really good recovery with that. Uh, but as we increased the pH, we could see that we had much better recovery uh, and able to get a 96% target exchange and very fast run times on these. That's one of the nice things about AAVs being dilute. Uh, they can run very quickly. And here's a nice picture or comic version of that. So hopefully I gave you enough of a teaser to see it, uh, how Unagi can work for you in your lab. You'll be able to do your buffer exchanges and concentrations. And whether you're working with nucleic acids or LMPs or AAVs, you can do all of that work in parallel. And it's really a snap with Unagi, having fast and flexible exchange. You'll have full process control with low hands-on time, but don't worry about giving up sample, sample uh, sacrificing, excuse me, sample integrity or recovery. Unagi will take care of you there. Uh, so hopefully, unlike the previous character, uh, with this great power, you'll use Unagi for good in your own lab. And with that, I will hand it back to Christy. Thank you, Dell, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of our webinar, as you mentioned. If you have a question to our audience, well, to our audience, if you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on that ask a question box located on the far left of your screen and we will answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Now we have quite a few questions that have already come in. Um, so I'm just gonna start here. What range of sample concentrations can I run? Ah, that's a good question. Um... You can so typically I answer this from the perspective of proteins, but we've had good results, Christy, with running uh, protein samples up to about 200 mg per mil. You know, and if you've worked with protein, you know that that's extremely viscous. Thankfully, we don't really have that problem with LMPs or viral vectors, and so pretty much any concentration, working concentration that we've come across, is very mm -hmm. compatible uh, with Unagi, uh, and then similarly with nucleic acids. And I guess one clarification I should make is a, another related question I get is like, well, can you run different concentrations at once? The answer is yes. If you remember, I had said that Unagi's volume measurement will always make sure that you, you won't lose sample. Um, but if you have a wide range, like magnitude, several magnitudes change in viscosity between sample types as a function of concentration, your, your runs are going to take pretty long. So we recommend like diluting to like you know, categories, if you will, of concentration ranges. Excellent. And thanks for adding that question in. Well, I won't ask you that one now. Um, let's go to this next one. How can I minimize aggregation of AAVs during buffer exchange? Ooh, yeah, that's a common problem. I didn't, I didn't touch on it too much, but yes, certain serotypes of AAVs, and I don't want to paint any of them as a villain, but between you and I, it's AAV2s, can be very prone to aggregation. And if you're already working with them in your lab, you're probably addressing the buffer conditions as that one uh, study that I mentioned alluded to. You know, different uh, pH ranges will affect aggregation of AABs. You're probably already using pleuronic acid as well. So you'll want to keep using whatever buffer conditions you do. But the power of Unagi, at least, like what extra help does it give you, really boils down to that gentle orbital mixing. So we see that that does uh, keep things in solution and can minimize uh, aggregation of AABs. Thanks, Del. Let's jump into this next one. Which LNP formulations have you tested? Uh, well, I'm a comic book pro and buffer exchange pro, not an LNP formulation pro, but in talking with many customers uh, and in you know working internally with different LNPs, I would say, 
as you saw, SM102, which is a very popular formulation, is something that we've internally tested. Uh, and then we've also done work with cationic uh, LMPs. Unfortunately, with um, customer supplied LMPs, it's usually proprietary information. So we don't know the exact formulations that customers have. Uh, so I can't tell you specifically, uh, but we have tested, I would say, a, a wide range. Thanks, Dill. Now, this question has come in multiple times. So can you elaborate on how your tech compares to TFF? Sure. So tangential flow filtration, it is a, you know, a viable technology, a viable alternative, and it does have a fit, you know, but it's usually more so towards, I would say, pre-manufacturing level. And so I would say that Unagi does very well when you're still doing like, you know, drug, drug screening, uh, when you might be doing some formulation work, when you really just want to have like fast results, you don't want to have to like set up, up TFF. Also the membrane type. So TFF typically only has PES as a membrane option because of the high forces that are generated. Um, whereas with Unagi, you do have the option of regenerated cellulose. Thanks, Dell. And let's go with this question. How long do runs typically take? There can, it's, it's hard to answer and I'll probably stumble over the answer to this. But we get asked that a lot. That's why I try to report the, the run times that you see here. So they do vary, but they vary as a function largely of your sample viscosity, as a function of concentration, temperature, you know, just your formulation. But I would say most customers, you know, AAVs and LMPs seem to run very quickly in about that two hour mark. Uh, and then nucleic acids, maybe just a little bit longer, a couple hours. Um, but I would say even really concentrated uh, proteins uh, are going to be less, you know, less than a day for sure to get the runs done. Great. And uh, let's see, here's another question that we have. How is the particle size of LNPs impacted by your technique? That's a good question. We've... Uh, We've looked at that a lot because LMP size changes are really detrimental, right? So, you know, it affects like the efficacy for the drug delivery and its uptake. And so in working with customers, we really have a good understanding of how critical it is to, to minimize LMP size changes. I would love to say that there's like zero size change. We do see that sometimes. Um, but if you're asking how like that gentle orbital mixing affects the size, We've done several internal studies. We see that there's no effect on the size change. Really, it seems to come down to the to the t amount of time LMPs stay in ethanol that allows them to, you know, reform and then deform, you know, break apart and then reform, I guess, uh, into larger size particles. So our technology, the positive pressure, the gentle orbit of mixing, those alone do not affect LMP sizing. It's really just how long they're in that uh, ethanol concentration. Thank you, Dell, and you've given us so much information today. Do you have any final comments for our audience? I guess just thank them, and then thank you, Christy and LabRoots, for hosting us. It's been enjoyable. I know that you know might be a lot of follow-up questions that might come up, or perhaps you're watching the, watching this on demand. Our website, uh, UnchainLabs.com, has a very nice resource library. You can go there and you know select by product or you know application that you want to look at. We have a host of app, app notes and other uh, videos on there to help you. And then of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, you can reach us at support at unchainlabs.com 24 seven around the world. Thank you so much. Dr. Delroy Jackson, we wanna definitely thank you for your time today and for your important research. And we also wanna thank LabRoots and our sponsor Unchained Labs for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I want to thank our audience, too, for joining us today and for their interesting questions. The questions that we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period, they will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. Today's webcast can be viewed on demand, and Labyrinths will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.